I want to talk, by the way, Pastor Caleb assigned the message topic to me today. I let him put the preaching schedule together, and this is the topic he gave me. Um, we are going to be looking at the table, the table that Jesus gave for us. Um, Luke twenty two fifteen. Jesus said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. What would make Jesus eager to come to Evergreen Church today? We take it for granted that Jesus is going to come, don't we? But here it says he's eager to eat this Passover. It's the table that brings him here. Um, Jesus wants to make our church, this church, a place of wonder. Pastor Caleb gave us a powerful verse at the beginning of the year, Mark 9, 15. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran out to greet him. Something about the presence. Last night at Awakening Music Festival, we had a variety of different bands there. Uh, in fact, I created a little video clip while we're standing in the front row worshiping. It's amazing what you can do on your iPhone. And if you guys could play that little clip, it just has a few little images that were in my phone. This is Brock, who's put the event together, and his daughter, Aisley. And uh, yeah, if you can play that, it should be a video. It should go. And if it's not going to go, then don't. Oh, there we go. No. Well, that's all we got. So it was an amazing night. We had a variety of bands. Uh, we had baptisms. We had multiple baptisms. Pastor Kim with a and A's they got baptized. I was getting to that, which was what a reward for Brock and Sarah that their daughter was baptized at the event. The general public, yeah. There were two pathways. We're at the Seattle Center, right underneath the Space Needle. And there are two pathways, and pedestrians were forced to walk through this Christian event. It's so awesome. I saw Hindus, Buddhists, and nuns. N-O-N-E-S. These are people with no faith at all walking through. There were people who were nicely dressed who had obviously come from some kind of theater event. And there's this guy doing rave. And as the music is going, these people are walking like, What's that? And because I could hear words about Jesus and the kingdom and eternal life and hope. And I thought, what would happen in our city if we just kept showing up? That was the very first Christian event on the green space at the Seattle Center since 1962 when it was opened. It's time, people, to wake our city up. But it starts right here in this room. And it starts at the table. Have you? been caught up in the wonder of Jesus? Again, I think there was something that happened during the pandemic when we stopped doing church for a while and we came back. All of us became impatient with church as a product, you know, the, the package thing. We hungered for something gritty and authentic, the real Jesus. And then the chosen took us to a whole nother level. What's fascinating with the chosen is we began to see a Middle Eastern Jesus, a gritty Jesus, a realistic version of Jesus. And there's this hunger for something more. But as beautiful as all those things are, what's really going to connect us with Jesus is the table. Because he says, I've eagerly desired to eat this meal with you. you. You could come to church on a regular basis, and we have communion, and think, oh, yeah, it's another communion. Or every time, step further and further into wonder. I, I want to look at communion from three perspectives here that makes it a table of wonder. It comes around the key words, in remembrance of me. The church that I grew up in as a kid had this big oak communion table and in big four-inch letters across the front said, in remembrance of me. What does that mean? It means more than we think it does. The first is obvious. Number one, we remember back then. We remember the past. Jesus, when he took the bread, he had given thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Jesus is and was a Jew. 
And Jesus is and speaking to Jews within Judaism when this moment is taking place. He is at a Passover Seder. This is a meal that is steeped in tradition. At that time, 1,500 years of trans tradition that he is going to upend because he's going to insert himself. Judaism is all about remembering. What they, they joke about in Israel is that all Israeli holidays are the same, it is that they tried to kill us, but God saved us, so let's eat. That's every Jewish holiday. So Passover, Holocaust Remembrance Day, Purim, Fallen Soldiers, Remembrance Day, Tish B'Av, which is coming up this coming Tuesday, remembering not once but twice the temple is destroyed on the same day. So the Babylonians and the Romans both destroyed the temple on the same day because both of those moments were a message from God. So in Tish B'Av, people grieve, they mourn, they fast, they wail, and then later on they're going to eat afterwards. Uh, every sad event becomes a memorial. Now, Jesus does something unique, and you could miss it because you've heard it too many times. This do in remembrance of me. He's saying this Passover celebration, whenever you do it, do it in remembrance that I did it. He's putting himself into it. Now, the Passover, of course, has the lamb, the blood, the bread without yeast. There's a lot of symbolism to it. It's an incredible experience. We've done it here at Evergreen, and we do it in our family. It's a powerful experience that believers should participate in. And it's easy to see the connection between the bread and the person of Jesus, and the cup and the blood that was shed for us on the cross. It's easy to see those symbols. But Jesus does even more than that. Um, let me ask you two questions. What was the greatest personal event of all human history? Like if you removed one personal event, the entire human experience would collapse. The first answer, personally, was the promise of Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 that through Isaac your seed would be reckoned. That is the miracle child, the child who changes everything. Through that covenant with Abraham, Genesis chapter 15, this is all the tension in the world today, the tension over Genesis 15, this is where all human goodness in society comes from. Whether you're a Christian or a Jew or a not believer or a non-believer, all goodness in human society comes from Genesis chapter 15, the call of Abraham. He calls him out from the world to follow him, and he gives him a covenant. Let me ask you the next question. On a national scale in world history, what is the most significant event that has happened for any other nation? And if that one event collapsed, the whole world order would, would disintegrate. It's easy. The exodus of the Jews out of Egypt. Most significant event in all human history. Again, without that exodus, none of us would be here today. Everything connects with that. And what Jesus says is this. This do in remembrance of me. And of course, after his resurrection, man, I just feel the joy rolling up inside of me. He says, go into all the world. And what he's saying is, we're going to take the Passover Seder and give it to the nations. It's not going to simply be deliverance for one people only. It's going to be deliverance for all people on the face of the earth. Every time you and I take the cup, the bread and the wine, we are participating with what's called salvation history. This great work that God has all the way from Adam and Eve until he comes again. <laughs> And we're plugged into something far bigger than ourselves. It is a gift to know Jesus. Because you are grafted into a story that's not your own or my own. You are, through faith in Christ, a child of Abraham. And you receive all the benefits that were given to Abraham's descendants through Isaac. That is an incredible gift through Christ. But there's even more. John is the only one who mentions of the four retellings of the feeding of the 5,000, something that most of you have probably never paid attention to. In John chapter 6, verse 4, it says, Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. And what does Jesus do next? He teaches a crowd, and he feeds 5,000 men, plus their wives, plus their children. You've heard the story, feeding the 5,000 many, many times. But you may not have known why it happened. And what I'm going to tell you next is going to be like a light bulb that's going to illuminate your mind. 
So three times a year, the Jews have to take a trip from wherever they live to Jerusalem to eat the festivals in the presence of God. So they're all on the road. They're on their way to Jerusalem. The place where the feeding of the 5,000 takes place is one of the main roads. It's called um, uh, the Via Maris. It's the way of the sea. And Jesus gathers the crowds who are on their way to Jerusalem for teaching. And then he feeds them. You think, well, what connection does this have to do with Passover? There's bread and fish. It's not bread and lamb. It doesn't make sense. Oh, there's a lot more to this story. What Passover requires is the lamb and the bread and no yeast. It's the one week, no yeast. You go to any restaurant in Israel during Passover, there's no yeast in anything. And Jesus gives them fish. He gives them bread. Wait for it. Because he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's the Lamb. And the yeast that they were denying themselves, it's in him because he is the bread of life. The yeast is the life in the bread. And the reason why they are going without the yeast in every Passover is to make room for the Lamb, the yeast, the life to come. When you and I partake of communion, we are in being enveloped into a story much grander, much more profound, much more monumental than you can possibly comprehend. And by the way, all of us, when we partake of that, should come with a sense of deep humility. This is why we're told to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We are living in the end of days where the Jews who gave us faith now need us, the Gentiles, to pray for them at this end of time. Because you and I, according to the Book of Romans, are the ones who are going to bring faith to them. So we receive this in remembrance of the past, but it's also remembrance of the now, the here and the now. Um, Jesus says, likewise, after the cup, they had, after they had eaten, he said, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. This word is has stumped theologians for centuries. And you can go one of two ways with it. There's one school of thought that this means the bread really becomes the body of Jesus. The wine really becomes the blood of Jesus. Is its vital and real. There's another extreme school of thought that says, no, 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 this is just a memorial meal. We're just remembering Jesus died on the cross. Our, our mind is taken back. It's a time of reflection. There's a third point of view. Uh, we call it spiritual presence. The bread is bread. The cup is a cup. But Christ is here. Have you wondered why communion is different than anything else we do in church? I mean, you could stop the music and stop the kids' ministry. You could even stop food trucks on the lawn and call, call just coffee house. But if you stop communion, we all know something major would be missing, right? It's just like baptism. We could stop a lot of things. We could sell the property, all of that. But boy, if we stop baptism, we all know something would be really wrong. Why? Because it's a sacrament. It's how we receive Christ. He's present with us in the meal. Wow. Think about it. Those early believers, the two men who walked on the road, all they had to do was become cognizant of Jesus, and suddenly he was gone. And they learned more by his disappearing than they did by his coming because they knew that he was there. And when you and I choose to become cognizant of Jesus, everything changes. I'm pressing into this because people right now, everything is distracting you. We have on Sunday maybe an hour and a half to get your attention and then you're back into this flow of information, flow of entertainment, flow of contrary opinions. You're just lost to whoever it is that you spend most time listening to online. And for 90 minutes, you're here. Everything would change if you and I could just develop this habit of becoming cognizant of Jesus. He's here now. 
in the bread in the cup. And then he's with me when a little child comes up to me. He's with me when I meet a stranger on the street. He's with me with the people that we met in the park. I had so many profound conversations with people. I even got to share hope in Yeshua with a Jewish man who was coming to faith in him, a, a man who was in his 80s. And his, it was just a beautiful story, the conversation I had. And I thought, how, Christ was there in that conversation. He was with me. He's in the midst. Most of us are fascinated with what's not really worth being interested in. And what's really important and essential is the presence of Christ between us. The early believers used a powerful little word. Uh, Paul uses it once, 1 Corinthians 16, 22, Maranatha. Maybe you've heard that word. You've heard the word Maranatha, Maranatha. What does that mean? It means one of two things. It means either Lord come, like please come here, or the Lord is come, he is here, either way. Now here's what's interesting about the word Maranatha. It's not a Hebrew word, it's not a Greek word, it's not a Latin word, it's an Aramaic word. You're thinking, Pastor Phil, uh, I'm not really a history person, so what difference does this make to me? It does, because the language that Jesus spoke was Aramaic. Uh, the world that Jesus lived in, Aramaic was the primary language. Hebrew was only used in the synagogue when reading the scriptures, the Torah. Uh, people in business used Greek. People in the ruling class used Latin. But the mainstream of society in Jesus' world, the common language people used was Aramaic. So in Acts chapter 2, when they are receiving the power of the Holy Spirit, those first believers, their core language is Aramaic. And so any word that you read in the New Testament in Aramaic, and there's a number of them, you know for certain that it came from the very first years of the church. In other words, we're dealing with something that is core. It is wired into the center of the church. So setting it up, the word Maranatha, comes to us from the Jerusalem church. This is a word that they would have used in the upper room as soon as Jesus had ascended into heaven. I mean, can you imagine? They've been with the presence of Jesus. Now Jesus has ascended into heaven. And every time they gather, they have the bread and the wine. They're saying, Maranatha, Lord, come. Come to us. We, we're so used to having you here. We want you here. Now this is where it gets really fascinating. There are no church buildings for 300 years. But there is one cave uh, a couple dozen miles outside of Jerusalem in a field. You have to climb through a fig tree to get down into this cave. And on the cave wall, and I'm going to have them put up here on the screen, there are Greek letters. If your Greek is up to snuff, you see exactly what that means. Anybody able to read the Greek? That was written by your spiritual ancestors. Why are they in a cave? Because they are persecuted. They're being persecuted by the Romans who have now conquered Jerusalem and their little pockets of Jews who live. And these are Jewish followers of Jesus as Messiah. And they're worshiping in a cave because they're heavily persecuted. Uh, this cave on the back wall, which is sort of a nice concave wall, it looks like a beautiful church. They've carved on the wall of that cave in big letters. These are about a foot tall. Two Greek words. The two Greek words, really simple. First word says Jesus, and the other one says present. That's how they decorated their church. Jesus is present. I haven't been to that cave yet, but I want to find that cave. I want to go down there, and I want to spend an hour in there and just imagine a group of believers who are hiding there in fear of their faith, but they're far enough away from civilization in this open field where they can sing their lungs out and praise to God. And somebody says, the Lord is here, Maranatha. And somebody says, I know, you're artistic, you can do it. And they start carving into the wall, Jesus is present. And they're doing this over and over again until the words go deeper and deeper and deeper. Those words are really deep. It obviously meant a lot to them. Does it mean much to you? Sometimes I wonder, would we notice if Jesus weren't present? 
because we're looking for the wrong thing. Let's become aware of the presence of Jesus at the table, in conversations. Pastor Caleb's been casting this powerful vision about tables of wonder. It goes into conversations we have with so many people. The simple choice that you and I make for hospitality, to welcome people, to have a conversation, brings Christ into the midst in a lonely city. A decision to come to food trucks this Tuesday night out on our lawn can be total Maranatha. You could go out of your way to meet people you've not met. Do what I do. I go to events like this, and I go out of my way to meet people I haven't met and to sit with them and experience Christ between you. It can come to the Alpha table. Now is the time to start praying. Who are you going to invite to Alpha in late September? Who are you going to sit at the table with? Alpha table after Alpha table, I make some of the most profound friends for the rest of my life because Christ shows up and he is present. Let's build a church that's built on the presence of God, on the nearness of him. Let's carve in the wall, Jesus is present, Jesus is present, Jesus is present. But there's even more to this. It's remembering the past, it's remembering now, but it's also remembering what's next. Luke twenty-two fifteen. listen to what Jesus said. I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And the question is, why? For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Most meals of remembrance look backwards. Thanksgiving, your birthday. When you're a kid, you want a birthday party. The older you get, you hope people forget your birthday party. And the more the years go by, the more we forget why we're doing it. So Thanksgiving becomes Friendsgiving because we can't remember the pilgrims and the reason why we did it in the first place. Um, but this meal is different. With all that I said about the Passover and about Jesus in the upper room, that's actually not the focus that Jesus gives to the Last Supper. Instead, he's looking forward to the kingdom of God coming in power in heaven and eventually on earth. Communion doesn't look backwards. Jesus wants us to look forward. A Christian should be the most optimistic person in the room because we have faith. As I watch the news unfold, I, I don't watch it with fear and trepidation. I say, oh God, it's going to be so interesting to see what you do with this one. <laughs> Dare to have faith. Because ultimately, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever. I tell you, Jesus said, I will not drink this fruit from the vine from now until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. There's a really familiar song. You know it by heart. We use it in concerts. We use it in church. I've heard it in TV commercials. Uh, hallelujah. And you all have that sense, oh, you should stand up in your chair, you know, and sit in your seat, you know, and pay attention. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That song, written by George Frederick Handel, uh, was written because of four hallelujahs in Revelation chapter 19. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And that's why the song repeats hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Because it repeats hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And you're thinking, why? First of all, hallelujah is a Hebrew word that means praise to Yahweh, praise to the God of the covenant. It's giving praise to God most high. Uh, and why are we saying praise, praise, praise to Yahweh four times over? <laughs> you should read this in Revelation. It's praising first and foremost in the first three hallelujahs because of the destruction of the world systems. That's why I don't fall in love with the world or the things of this world. about the wedding that is to come and the meal that is after the wedding that is called the wedding supper of the Lamb. And if the call of Abram out of Ur to Canaan was the most significant personal event in human history, and if the call of the Jews out from Egypt into the promised land was the most significant national event, 
most significant worldwide event will be the marriage supper of the Lamb. That is a meal you never want to miss. You want to be at the table. And every time we take the bread and the wine, we're not just looking backward people, we're looking forward. That my name is written there on the page, white and fair. And one day, they're going to escort me through a row of chairs and say, this one is yours. This is what it says. Let us rejoice and exalt, Revelation 19.7, and let us give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and the bride has made herself ready. It'll be the most unbelievable setting you have ever seen. The most indescribable menu you have ever consumed. You're going to be able to eat without getting fat. And that is going to be so good. Eternal joy with Jesus. Here's the big thing. You personally are going to meet Jesus personally, face to face. You'll see his face and you'll see your face. You're really taking this in. And you're going to eat and drink with Christ. I knew a, a man who was struggling with alcohol addiction. And everything changed for him one day when he thought about this story. He thought, my next drink is with Jesus. And he said from that point on, he can release alcohol in this life because he knew it would be safe in the world to come. That's the power that his presence can make now. Let's do it remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes. The world is not going out with a war, it is going out with a wedding. Go hear and praise God. You and I are on the winning team. Isn't this good? Turn to your neighbor and say, there is hope. Come on, there is hope. Look them in the eye like you really mean it. Tell them there's hope. Tell them there's hope. Let's stand. Lord, I pray for your church today. Would you refresh us and revive us in the Holy Spirit? If you want something new in your life, we just raise your hands to heaven. We gotta just do something, people. Something to stir your blood and stir your passion. We raise your hands toward heaven. God, we raise our hands toward heaven. We say, revive us, Lord. Awaken us. Get us out of the sleepy stupor of our world over entertainment and lack of worship and bring us, Father, into a new recognition of the presence of Jesus. I pray that you would stir us with holy passion, a new fire. I pray you begin to burn within us. I pray, Lord, a new zeal for your house, a new zeal for your work, a new zeal of love for lost people, a new hunger to care for one another, a new thirst for things that are eternal, a longing for the Word of God, a longing for worship, a longing for fellowship. Get us out of our isolation and bring us into community. I pray that you would stir our zeal for evangelism, our zeal for outreach, our zeal for witness. Let us be ablaze. Take away our fear of standing out, our fear of being different. Give us the courage to be righteous. Give the courage, the courage of Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego who said we will not bow down even if he doesn't deliver us. Give us a courage like Daniel to continue to pray every day without fail. Father, help us, Father, to be those people of courage to stand up in this present age. And I pray, Father, you fill us with new passion and new zeal for you. Church, let's worship. Let's just worship you. Elijah, let's just worship. Jesus 
Christ, my living hope. Yes, you are. Sealed the promise. 